Canyoneering, bushwhacking, and jungle trekking are just a few of the activities of endurance team competitors. Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman. On this edition of Eco News, we travel here to Fiji in the South Pacific to follow 81 teams as they swim, bike, and paddle during the Eco Challenge. Stay with us. The interaction between the environment and peoples throughout the world affects the quality of life on this planet. As citizens of our community, we can participate in decisions impacting our city, state, and nation. In this series, we explore the effects of our influence on the Earth's ecosystems, as well as alternatives and solutions. This is Eco News with your host, Nancy Perlman. There are 324 competitors here in the 2002 Eco Challenge in Fiji. We're going to see many professionals, including architects, teachers, business people, military personnel, and athletes. Each team must be composed of males and females. And we find that the 20 and 30 year olds predominate. I'm Mark Burnett. We're here in Fiji at the middle of this year's Eco Challenge where 81 international teams are racing 500 kilometers through the remote parts of Fiji. Over the last nine Eco Challenges, we've seen that the average age of a competitor is around 34, half of them are married, and many have graduate degrees. It's certainly an upper demographic of people who do this. Eco Challenge is all about getting back to nature in an expeditionary form where people are working in groups and teams, men and women combined, racing 500 kilometers annually over the world's, world's most beautiful but hostile terrain. It's really teamwork, camaraderie and togetherness of a group of people which is far more important than physicality or technical prowess. I'm Mark Coslett and I'm here shooting the eighth Eco Challenge I've covered. The Eco Challenge is a multi-day, multi-discipline adventure race which takes place in a different part of the world every year. The first one occurred in Utah and in Australia, Morocco, Argentina, Borneo. I'd say the experience of the athletes is they got what they asked for. They asked for more adventure in the Eco Challenge. It's wide open jungles. I talked to Barry Sith of REI Adventure today caught up with him on the bike leg, and he said he, fought, he dropped off a 60-foot cliff in the jungle, sustained multiple injuries to his head, and yet was not seriously injured and able to continue. But that's the difference. It's like they're really out on their own out there, and, and they're not being babysat. In order to find a place to hold Eco Challenge, there are three criteria that I really need. Is it an iconic location that conjures up images in your mind when you hear about it? Is it in fact beautiful when you get there? And is the government receptive to working with you? Because without the government working together, you couldn't pull this kind of enormous logistics off. And so I have location scouts, professional film location scouts, scouring the world looking for sites. And uh, with the current problems in the world, it's getting smaller and smaller and harder and harder to find safe places to hold Eco Challenge. I'm Marjorie Perry with Team Explorer Camp Sunshine. And we. Um we were having a really good day, making good time, got into the CP, uh, what was that, CP2? Or uh, CP3. CP3, and then we set off for the jungle trek and it was right at nightfall. The navigation in the jungle is very difficult because there's just so much water. So we ended up scurrying up this really long waterfall, this drainage system, which was really scary. And then we had to scurry down this steep cliff that was just like a straight drop off holding on to roots, whatever we could find, basically just sliding down on our butts. And then we got down and went down another waterfall system, not knowing if we were eventually going to just come to a big waterfall that we wouldn't be able to get over and have to go back up. But we eventually got back down and when we got to the, we made it to the river thinking, all right, we made it, there's the river. And it turned out to be the same river we were on when we started. And we were only 
two miles away from checkpoint three where we started. Every time we've gone through a village, um, when we went down in the Billy Billy, they, they all came out along the river and they would cheer us on. And, and uh, when we're hiking, they all come to the street and they follow you and they shake your hand. And um, they're so friendly and they want to help you and, and go get your, some water for you. And they want to carry your packs and they, they beg you, can we, oh, let me take your pack. And we're, no, it's against the rules. We have to carry our own pack. And, so they just are just wonderful. Everywhere you go, it's bula, bula. <laughs> so it was really neat. We, we were welcomed into their home. They made pancakes for us and tea and put down mats on the floor for us to rest. Shooting this year's Eco Challenge has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot more relaxed, and I've been working with my waterproof housing for my camera a lot, put on my mask and snorkel, and get right next to the competitors with the camera. I'm trying to get split frames where you see the bottom of the rocks in the river and them carrying the bikes. Very difficult shots to get. At first you think the water is warm, but if you spend about a half hour to an hour submerged in it, you really get cold quickly. So a lot of times when I'm doing that kind of work, I wear a wetsuit. Even though it doesn't seem like it's needed, it's amazing how quickly you get cold. The first night we slept in a village on someone, well we were, yet yeah, we were welcomed in their home. We slept one hour and uh, we slept on their floor. And the next night we were lost in the jungle. We slept two and a half hours by a little creek that runs down into a river. Um, it was raining and so it was, it was pretty miserable. Um, and then last night we slept an hour at the bike pickup. So overall, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half hours. How do you look so fresh when you've had so little sleep? <laughs> Well, I feel really fresh right now from here up, but from here down, I'm hurting. And I'm pretty achy, feet hurt, um, hands hurt, everything kind of hurts a little bit. But, you know, you just have to have a good attitude and do the best you can. Most people won't even believe this is Fiji. Whitewater rivers, canyons, dense, dense jungle, where most people's impression are pristine sandy beaches and islands like in the movie Castaway. But we found the heart of Fiji and the heart of the people. It's an incredible, incredible place. We're here in Waibeka Village where the local people have welcomed all the crew, the media, the participants in this eco challenge. It's been a fascinating day where we've had an opportunity to see teams come in and also enjoy the hospitality of the local people who share their song and dance with us as well.